Oh, right. Um, some stuff I want to record, but I have been holding off quite a bit because I'm kind of banking on the new iPhone being awesome. At least I'm hoping it is. And that doesn't come out for, what, another, I don't know, half a month if I am able to get it right away. But uh, there's like a lot of stuff I, I do want to try and, and cover, or at least just get my thoughts out via uh, recording. Um, so right now, sorry everybody, um, <laughs> it's a weird upward angle. I don't, I don't have a tripod uh, on hand right now. I have one downstairs and I really don't feel like getting it. But so we're gonna do my pre-workout stuff. So I did use pre-workout today. I've been feeling pretty sluggish today. Um, I recommend not doing it every, every day, but let's be honest, a lot of us use it more than we should. It's definitely not the best for you. Um, we got here, um, so this is actually just um, a pre-workout carb drink uh, with uh, HBCD carbs, a uh, highly branched cyclic dextrin. It absorbs really, really fast reason I'm drinking that before I even go is because I am utilizing uh, some uh, fast-acting insulin. Just a little bit, though. But um, I do notice I go hypo quite a bit, and, like, that's indicative. Like, you don't even necessarily have to be using insulin for this to happen. I really don't recommend anyone go to insulin unless they have a, a very knowledgeable coach that introduces the idea to them themselves. Don't just be like, oh, someone else is doing it. I need to do this. Um, but so uh, going hypo basically anyway. So like when, when you take the exogenous insulin, it's kind of um, pulling all your blood sugar out. And uh, the result of that could be you um, get shaky. You are feeling faint. Um, could You could feel nauseous. Uh, you're getting cold sweats, lightheadedness and stuff. Um, and, and like when you take the exogenous insulin, like it's going to become very evident when that's the case. Uh, I know like traditionally when I learned about this stuff back in the day, it was to take like between six and 10 grams of, uh, of uh, fast acting carbohydrates per every IU of insulin you take. Uh, I found with at least myself, I need to be on the higher end of that. Um, I, I have gone <laughs> gone hypo pretty pretty fucking easy, uh, but you don't, you don't even need to be taking insulin for that to happen actually. So, like let's say you're like leaning out really crazy, like you're you know you're really cut up, and now like you're you're doing um, I don't know you, like you finish your it happens it happens to me when I'm really lean when I'm not taking any of the stuff like when I'm uh, uh when like I, I after I consume my post workout shake so like basically like the same thing could happen is like you're you're really lean your body's sensitive it's like a sponge so like post workout typically for bodybuilders they're like still ingesting some kind of carb with their pr protein shake so like a common setup for me would be um, I'm consuming I don't know. Uh, like 60 grams of whey isolate, but I'm also putting like, let's say 45 grams, uh, well, probably less if I'm really like, like 30, to, well, let's say 30 to 45 grams of cream of rice in there, which is very fast absorbing. Well, like you're, you're super lean, your body's like a sponge, your insulin sensitivity is very, uh, high. So what that's kind of going to mean is like when once you consume those carbs um you know like with that post workout shake like at least i find with myself this is where i would go hypo uh you do that it it triggers your pancreas to release insulin and it's um doing doing it like very readily because like your your body is so uh i don't want to say deprived but um like your 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 nutrient partitioning is very good very well uh and and that's basically Sorry, I always feel like the need to fucking explain these things, but you're, uh, or explain it to the best of my knowledge, I should say, but, but your, your nutrient partitioning would basically be like your body's ability to partition off or, or utilize, um, the types of calories you are consuming, uh, more readily, uh, efficiently for like your, your, to, to go towards your, your, your muscle tissue, um, so, uh, because it's so good at that and your metabolism is very high, it's going to, it's going to kick on the pancreas to release the insulin once you consume like some post-workout carbs and all of a sudden, um, like very shortly after you're going hypo and you're experiencing all those 
things I just said, like the lightheadedness, the cold sweat, you're feeling faint, shaky. Like that, that could happen without even doing that. But anyway, uh, that's like a way too fucking long-winded uh, explanation of uh, why I have this here. Um, and it's very fast acting, right? So like right after the pin, like I'm drinking that immediately. And uh, I, I've, you, you have to do that because it, it's so fast acting. Like it, maybe you could consume it. Um, maybe you could consume it like even like, I don't know, like within, within a half hour. I, I don't, I don't like doing that kind of shit. Um, especially because this is a, uh, there's multiple ways to, to utilize this stuff. Like the way I am being instructed and told or um, suggested to me is to do it uh, pre-workout, which I've actually grown to enjoy. But I've heard of people doing a post-workout. Uh, some people even do an intra-workout. I uh, it seems a bit riskier to me. <laughs> um, and and that's just because uh, while you're while you're lifting weights, um, it, you're gonna you're gonna burn through bl uh, glucose so fast that um, I, I I've tried it once when I was younger doing an intra-workout, and I ate the normal amount of carbohydrates. That I would I would use honey honey and I would have glucose tablets on hand on hand and I I would uh, I tried it intra workout because I heard of like really big bodybuilders doing it and of course when you're a young impressionable kid you're like oh well I'm gonna try that too now and uh, <laughs> I did that I ate I I drank or drank yeah like I I used the amount of honey that I typically would where I was fine but I did an intra workout and then. Within two sets of incline bench, I was super hype. I wanted to bring up a, a passing out because I just like those two sets was able were, were able to just just pull so much out of me that that wasn't even good enough. And I like hurried over like like lazily slapped like five bucks on the gym counter, had them give me a Gatorade and ate the glucose taps and drank a shitload of Gatorade. Um, honorable mentions, by the way, Gatorade. So I, I have tried Gatorade. Um, there have been times where like I, I'm probably I'm super lazy on making sure I have everything on hand. I kind of like buy like a shitload of protein and supplements in bulk, but then like I run out and I know I'm running out and I keep like telling myself in my head, you need to order some. You're about to run out, and I just like keep letting it slip. And then I remember and I'm like I'm gonna do that in five minutes, and I keep forgetting. And then I'm like I'm, I run into like uh, a day like where I just don't have, <laughs> I don't have that shit on hand. And I, I've tried using the Gatorade and. Um, I've gone hypo using the Gatorade. I've gone hypo, hypo using the Gatorade using drinking like two giant ones, so which like way more carbs than I would need, but it was still not enough. Uh, or it, 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 I should say it was enough, but it it wasn't uh, it wasn't absorbing in my body fast enough to be to be utilized for what I was doing. Um, so that you know that may not be the case for other people, but that's what I've noticed myself. Anyway, this is taking like eight minutes to fucking explain one portion of this. But anyway, I'm making my uh, my intro workout shake right now. So I, I use, um, let me see right here. I use BulkSupplements.com. And I, I put two scoops of, uh, or close to two scoops of HBCD carbohydrates. And both of these, this is my pre-work, uh, while well, I'm taking this pre-workout. This is my intro workout shake, intro workout carbs. And I'm also putting a bunch of um, amino acids and creatine in there um uh basically the prerogative here is you're trying to make sure that your your muscles are they are more readily able to produce pumps produce good pumps recover faster while you're training and to be able to go as little catabolic as possible you still need to have breakdown if you don't have breakdown you don't have growth but we're talking about like trying to avoid any excessive breakdown because like no matter no matter what you're taking it's gonna fucking happen all right like i'm so sick of people with that you know i, I remember being a young like a young fucking idiot like most kids are uh so like i get it like everything i'm speaking about i get it i've i've been there i've done it uh being young and impressionable i was like oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna take a take an ass load of gear I'm going to not, or I'm going to like shovel in a bunch of like shit food. I'd have like a breakfast and I was like counting calories back then. I wasn't like weighing my shit out. Um, but I, yeah, I'd be like eating like fucking three muffins, like fucking a dozen eggs. And like my breakfast was like 1500 calories. And I'm like doing that and like using protein bars and other like shitty sources and stuff. And like, I just wasn't growing very well. And it was like really pathetic for the amount of shit I was taking. Whereas, like, now I'm, like, double the size, 
and uh, everything's in pretty modest amounts. Uh, nothing's crazy. Um, but kids don't get, well, and, and it's tough too, because when you're, you're in the gym seriously, you're bodybuilding and all this shit. And, um, the, the, the general tone of logic that tends to work out for everyone is more is better. And you, you do get positive feedback with a lot of these things like more food. I grow more. Um, I lift more weights. I get bigger. Like these, these are the things that people, people apply it to the wrong shit because it's been so universal with other things that they're like, well, if I take double the amount of gear someone else says I'll get twice as big and that's not true like I don't know if anyone I used to be a World of Warcraft nerd when I was younger like like deep into end game shit it's like uh doing like mythic raiding on progression with guilds so like believe me I I get it if anyone's into that stuff it's like a full-time job but uh you know there's like a thing in all kinds of games called diminishing returns well especially true in that game and the same thing applies to using a shitload of gear. There is a such thing as too little for you. There's a such thing as like a perfect amount. And then there's diminishing returns. Where uh, if you're ever playing like a game like that, if you use the same spell way too many times in a row, the like duration and effectiveness of it drastically decreases that it's not even as uh, effective as you spacing it out and using it timely this applies with gear if you start slamming way too much gear you're going to get diminishing returns you're you're going to cause way too much systemic inflammation you're not going to be digesting your food well that's going to be indicative of you eating and feeling way too full for the amounts you've eaten and it feels like there's a bowling ball in your stomach after you've had every meal i'd be surprised if you're able to eat enough food um doing stuff like that but like you're putting yourself in a drastically unhealthy state in the hopes of getting twice the results in half the time and it's not going to work like that and i get it i get it believe me people don't want to spin their wheels i i've spent many years spinning my wheels with this stuff i've been lifting for 14 years and while I do feel like I'm getting decently big now, I'm by no means as big as you'd expect someone to be for doing at that time. And I, you know, bodybuilding was not the focus for most of it. I um, didn't really figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to do everything at once. So I wanted to look ripped and jacked. But I also wanted to be an MMA fighter and a boxer. And I did that for five years. But I multitasked that with the lifting. And when you're lifting five days a week. And you're also training sometimes twice a day in these other things. Another five, maybe six days a week. That's overtraining. Even if you're a real young guy, which I was. Like that was overtraining. Like I was getting nagging injuries that no 19 year old had business getting and all the way through like 22 i shit just like it, it you know it um injuries don't typically show themselves in the form of just like a drastic you snapped your shit kind of injury injuries start happening where things start not they start to not feel right maybe you're getting chronic like nagging pain in your shoulder joint or now when you're doing curls or, or rows now you're getting weird inner elbow pain or maybe you're doing triceps and skull crushers are killing your elbows more than they feel like they're actually working your triceps and a lot of people they're like well i'm gonna avoid those things and like that's also the wrong thing to do but you need to address like why is that happening how can i fix it and what could i do to have it not return because while all, while all that's being said, let's be honest. If you if you've never had a nagging injury, like kudos to you. But that also probably means you're not training hard enough, right? No one makes it out unscathed. Now you can be like excessively stupid about it, and like cause a bunch of unneeded risk because of the way you're lifting or things you're doing. But if you're training super hard and you're pushing your limits all the time. 
chances are you're going to encounter a nagging injury at some point. It's going to happen. And it's okay. It's okay. It's just if it becomes an all the time thing, shit's not going away. You're trying to work through it. It's not working out for you. Other things are going wrong. If you're like having like, if you're not even able, and I mean, this is all from experience here. Like if you're not even able to have a month of straight training without something else fucking hurting, like enough that it's affecting your workouts, something's going on there and you could chalk it up to overtraining, but the better thing to do right away is trying to analyze what you're doing, which is why I know a lot of people like really shit on using tripods and the such, but honestly, why not? Especially even when you're looking at yourself in the mirror performing something, the mirror is lying to you. Um, you're not getting a full picture. Now, the way you should record yourself is not often the way people want uh, want them to be seen on Instagram reels and things like that. Like maybe you need to do uh, record a deadlift just from the side view so you can see your spinal angle. Um, shit, we're putting in some EAAs in here, but like you see what I'm saying? Like it, you know, like everything's a tool. Every single thing you do is a tool, and you want to use the tools correctly, right? You're 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 not gonna try and you're not gonna try and uh, beat a nail into wood with a screwdriver. And in, in the same sense, like you got to know when to utilize certain tools you have in your arsenal. And you know, people do it incorrectly all the time. I've done shit incorrectly. I mean, there's probably something I'm doing incorrectly right now that I'm gonna look back in like five years. I'm gonna be like, wow that was kind of dumb. It, it, it happens. It happens. But your, your goal, you're trying to be a student of the game here. You're trying to like constantly educate yourself, improve and do better so that you become a more well-rounded, not only lifter, bodybuilder, but a person. Um, so that's enough of me talking about all that shit. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about abs. Um, I don't have a, con a conventional viewpoint on ab training. Now, you will find people out there that they, you know, they have world-class abs and they, like, only do bodyweight stuff. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that, but uh, at least for myself, I think it's better to do weighted ab work. And I will be honest here, like... Um, I genetically have pretty good abs, so, you know, I don't think they're the best in the world, but they're very good. Uh, I also do not have the world's smallest waist. So the kind of idea that bodybuilders have in mind when they're like trying to do body weight work with things like that is they're trying to avoid, avoid blowing their waist out. And we've all seen someone with a blown out waist. Like there's probably been someone at your local gym, like they look jacked, but their stomach's just fucking out there. And you know what? Mine's kind of out there right now, just from the point in bulking that I am, or I should say in off season that I'm at right now with my growing. But the point is like my, my shit's not blown out when I prep. Um, but you see people that are like on stage and their shit's blown out. So like, I understand that reasoning to where now you're like, I, I don't want to give myself any more risk factors for blowing my waist out. But, um, you know, at the same time, they're like, yeah, people do have, have world-class abs doing that. But also, like, for myself, you know, um, yeah, I should – here's my reasoning. Do you, do, you, do you want to have defined abs or do you want to have big abs with deep cuts in them? Because if you do bodyweight work on anything uh, training-wise – it's only going to get you so far. You like we we've seen gymnasts. You've all seen a gymnast out there. They do like a bunch of pull ups and crazy uh, body weight exercises, and like they look cut up. You know, like they've got a little bit of roundness to their muscle. Like maybe they're like a little striated to some degree, but they're small. They're they're they're, they're small, but they they look good being small. Um, now, if you want to be, like, big and you want to have deep cuts in the abs, you need the abs to pop out more, more so than they would with just body weight work. And that's where I really think the two key things to, to utilize would be to find a weighted crunch machine. But you, the caveat, at least in my mind, is that you want to have it 
so that when you're fully extended at, the, at you know stretching out a rep you want to be able to arch your back as much as possible the more you're able to stretch the abdominal wall out the more fiber recruitment and stimulation you're getting so i think that's a big tool um the other one is doing leg raises and i like using a um, leg raise chair with a particularly with a bosu ball on the back of it or i should say a half bosu ball on the back of it uh, which most gyms have. I get kind of annoyed when they don't have it, but because I want that arch in my back. You know, if you have one that just has like a normal flat pad for your back on, on it, you're not able to arch your back. You're not able to stretch out your abs all the way. And that's especially an exercise where like that's kind of the prerogative doing the leg raise. So uh, that's my favorite go-to. I see people hanging off of like pull-up bars doing it. I don't really care for that. So it's not wrong if you do it that way. It's just I, I don't really care for that. I don't I don't I don't want my focus to be on my grip. I know you could be like, oh, you straps like that. Even if I use straps, I don't want my focus to be on maintaining body position while I'm trying to stretch and contract my abs. I, if I can if I can provide myself with less things to focus on, I'm going to get more out of the exercise. So that's the reasoning there. All right, I've talked enough. Um, thank you for uh, thank you for watching this. If you do, I don't even know if this is interesting to listen to, but I'm gonna drink this shit and go to the gym.